Yes, hello! Is that Jacques with my boots? Actually, it's Nancy Drew. But I do have your boots for you. Oh, good! Uh, boots, fine! Uh, thank you, thank you. Everything is fine. Uh, just leave the boots at the door, please. <laughs> oh, and it seems I'm out of change. I'll just have to tip you the next time, Mandy. No tip is necessary, Professor Hotchkiss. I don't actually work here. My name's Nancy Drew. I heard your room was robbed, and I'd like to find out what was taken so that Mr. Egan can report it. Everything's under control, dear. Nothing to report. Thank you for my boots. My poor feet have been feeling so exposed. It's stuck. I'm not sure if I can make it. Can I help you? About my radiator, Mr. Egan. Do you think you'll be able to fix it anytime soon? Sorry, not yet. Hotchkiss called to report that she got her boots. But now I'm told that the light is out in the back stairwell. Could you check the circuit breaker in the basement and make sure it's working? Some vacation this is turning into. Did you figure out the problem with the circuit breaker? I was in the elevator and it got stuck between floors. I had to climb out the top and I just barely made it up to the floor above. Do you think you'll be able to fix it? Well, I doubt it's broken. I'll check the power switch in the basement. Glad you're okay. But don't go climbing around the elevator shaft anymore. It's dangerous in there. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. Hi there, how's it going? What do you know about Jacques Brunet? Didn't you watch the last Winter Olympics? He's France's big cheese of skiing. He holds the record for the 500 meter slalom, but he totally choked at the games. I guess he's washed up now, but at least his looks haven't gone down the tubes. So tell me more about the life of a photojournalist. It must be very glamorous at times. Well, there's nothing glamorous about the pay, I can tell you that much. There was a little mix up with the lockers, and I accidentally opened yours. Yeah, and? Well, I was kind of confused. I was just trying to see whose stuff was in there, and I found a bunch of IDs in your bag. They all had your picture, 
and other people's names on them. A savvy photojournalist always carries a couple of alternate identities, Nancy. When you're working under deadline, you don't always have time to play by the rules. I'm sure you know what I mean. Does your job take you to exotic, far-off places? Well, there is a lot of travel. Too bad I'm so useless with foreign languages. I'm dying to find a way into that tower. Where do they usually hide the secret entrances in weird old Midwestern mansions? <laughs> I guess I should know, shouldn't I? Too bad most of the places I've covered aren't any weirder than imitation butter. I wish you'd hurry up and find it, though, so we can check it out. I'll let you get back to your magazine. Later, Nancy. It's locked. Yes? Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Bye, kiddo. Yes? I don't want to pester you, Mr. Egan, but <clears throat> the radiator... Thanks for dealing with the circuit breaker. Okay, we're really making progress here, kid. So, you go up to Hotchkiss's room and see what she wants for dinner. She's not answering her phone. No problem, boss. Ugh! Virginia Woolf never endured such interruptions! Who is it? It's Nancy again. Dexter needs to know what you want for dinner. Oh, hard to think of food candy when I'm riding the raging rapids of my theory. Oh, right now, I have plenty of pre-packaged energy globules to keep me going. But tell Baxter that I am developing a powerful craving for couscous. Yes, couscous for dinner would be splendid. I'll have a nice tip for you next time, Fanny. It's locked.
Yes? The professor says she has a hankering for, um, couscous. Couscous? Never heard of it. Tell her to order something off the menu. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. Is that my couscous already? Sorry, Professor, but there's no couscous in the house. You'll need to choose something from the hotel menu. Well, I don't have a menu. At least not from this hotel. Oh, oh be a doll and, and fetch me one, will you? Ta-ta. Did you get the menu? Sure did. How about opening the door so I can give it to you? Oh, you're a sneaky one. Just slip it under the door, please. Nice and easy. No funny stuff. Uh, oh, baby back ribs, yes. Oh, chili cheese dog. A uh, 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 fried bologna sandwich. Uh, I'm not usually much of a meat eater, but uh, uh, very well. Fifty drumsticks, please. Chicken, that is. Cluck, cluck. Sure. Fifty drumsticks. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. Rock and roll, dear. Can I help you? The professor has changed her order. Seems she's developed an appetite for chicken drumsticks. Fifty of them. Okay, then. Drumsticks we got. Oops, but I guess Jock better take that bag of chicken legs out of the freezer. Will you tell him? And then take the rest of the day off, kid. Your radiator's as good as fixed. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. Ah, Nancy, como se va? Dexter needs you to defrost that big bag of chicken legs. Oh, la la la, what does he think I am? A sous chef! Lisa told me you were in the Olympics. What was that like? Disappointing, frustrating, humiliating. Oh, what happened? It was the worst day of my life. To fall flat on my face with my family, my country, and the rest of the world watching. I'll talk to you later. A bientôt. Hello? Ned, it's me! Well, you're a sound for sore ears. Bess called me and told me your vacation is rapidly turning into another mystery. So who do you think the Vandal is? I really don't know. It would help if I could at least imagine a motive. But why would anyone want to vandalize a beautiful old library? There must be more to it than meets the eye. Sounds like you better find a way to get in there and take a look around. Apparently, this castle's tower used to be a hangout for Marie Antoinette. Who's that? Ezra Wickford's wife? Are you kidding? Marie Antoinette was a famous queen of France. And she used to hang out in Wisconsin? No, silly. The tower was originally part of the Chateau Rochemont in France. 
Ezra Wickford fell in love with the tower and imported it to Wisconsin. And Marie didn't want to come along. Well, that would have been pretty tough for her, considering... Ned Nickerson, are you pulling my leg? What do you mean, Nancy? You know very well that Marie Antoinette was beheaded in 1793, don't you? Well, yeah. I guess I read something about that when I studied the French Revolution. But when did Wickford show up? He didn't discover the tower until the 1920s, over a hundred years after Marie's death. Whew! I think I'm all clear now. Thanks for straightening that out for me, Detective. You are some pain in the neck, pal. Good thing I'm so cute. I'm trying to get into the library, but the door is locked and I can't find any other way in. Maybe the detective entrance isn't through a door at all. There must be a more creative way to drop in on the crime scene. You don't think I should just borrow Dextra's extra key from the front desk? I don't know, Nancy. Waltzing right through the front door isn't very adventurous, and it might not be as easy as you think. Are you ready for a crazy coincidence? Only if it's a crazy one. Ezra Wickford also imported the library, and it seems that he bought it from the family of Jean Leboeuf, the revolutionary commander who captured Marie Antoinette when she was trying to escape from France. You're kidding. So Wickford imported Marie's tower and her enemy's library? Exactly. Doesn't Le Bouf mean the cow in French? Actually, I think it just means the beef. Hmm. Well, in any case, I bet the guy would be happy to know that his library ended up in the heart of America's Dairyland. Bye, Ned. Keep me posted. Hello? Hi, it's me. How's it going, Nancy? Are things calming down around the castle? Not unless you find it calming to climb out of a stuck elevator. What do you mean, stuck? The elevator broke down? Well, that's what I thought. Until I talked to Dexter, who said it was probably the power switch in the basement. But, Nancy, how could the power switch just go off while you were in the elevator? Maybe someone turned it off. But why? That's what I'm wondering. How did you climb out anyway? I climbed through a hatch in the roof of the cab and just barely made it up to the next floor. So you were standing on top of the elevator in the open shaft, way up high? Ugh, just the thought of it makes my stomach do somersaults. Anything interesting in the elevator shaft? Just a metal ladder leading up to this ventilation duct or something. Nothing unusual, except that the cover for the duct looked like it was about to fall off. Hmm. Maybe someone needed to inspect the duct and forgot to replace the grate? Or maybe the duct leads somewhere, like to buried gold or a hidden... Bess, that was Nancy's last case. She's in Wisconsin now, not San Francisco. I met my ski instructor, Jacques Brunet. He sure is French. Ooh la la, those accents should be illegal. I hate to break it to you, Bess, but uh, he's engaged. Now there's a real crime. Right, Bess. Humanity is devastated. I'm trying to meet with Professor Hotchkiss to find out what was stolen from her room. But she won't open her door to discuss it. That's odd. I wonder what she's so nervous about. I'll bet she's hiding something in her room. Like what, Bess? The elephant that trampled the library? She's probably just a little freaked. I mean, if her room really was robbed... You'll find a way to make her trust you, Nancy. I'll bet Bess's last slice of pizza on it. Hey... Okay, you two. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, Nancy. See ya.
Okay, okay, I hear you. Darn you crazy old man. I know you hid that thing around here somewhere. The least you could have done was left me a hint. I don't have time to clean this up. 